The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games podcast network. This week's episode of PSVG Prime is brought to you by the amazing folks over at patreon.com slash PSVG. But special thank yous to Edwin Callow, Barry Cathcart, Josh Barboni, Chris M., Devin Tyus, Paul Calico, Kyle Heyman, Benny Liu, and Joel Voss, Professor Switch. In case for some reason, I don't know how you don't, because I say the same thing every week, but just, hey, you know, every episode could be somebody's first episode. So if you're not familiar with what we do over the Patreon, you get some awesome exclusive audio content directly in a special feed made for you, including PSVG DLC, our unrated show that we don't really know what the topics could be or where we're going to go with it, but it's there. Uh, Arcadia Academia, Kevin Hates Everything, and the latest Board With Everything show, the first one dropped last week. Uh, But on top of that stuff, you also get entered monthly in to win a cool prize. The current offerings in the prize box are $20 to Apex Legends, NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 on Switch, and I'm still going to keep saying Donnie should take that out of the box, but I'm still going to say that every time I talk about it, guys. So if you want Donnie to take it out, just tweeted him at play nintendo um you also could get 20 dollars to the eShop of your choosing and we still have a psvg black polo in the box and the latest edition which i literally don't even have so you could get it before me and that's a tragedy a psvg baseball cap is also in the box there so to get in on all the action and help support us head on over to patreon.com slash psvg but now let's get on with this week's episode Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of PSVG Prime, the flagship show of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. And as I your host, Kevin Austin. And with me this week, well, first, thank you to Josh for helping cover last week. We appreciate you, Josh, and love you. But I missed my cohort. I missed the Robin to my Batman. Or maybe he's more Alfred. Mr. Lucas Rhodes. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I told you I wanted to be referred to as Josh for this episode because there was some stuff that went down, and uh, I just have something I need to do really quick. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Josh. I drink lots of beer and I eat a spicy chip for some reason. And uh, I don't understand what Zelda's all about. What, what's what's that all about? I, I hate the sound of my own voice. Ha ha ha. Take that, Josh. I heard you talking about my dogs. Well, well, to be fair, from from listening to Flux, suppose it sounds like you don't understand Zelda either. So you you both have that in common, I guess. You're right. I never thought about it like that. Now you guys can bond. See? PSVG is all about making friends, everybody. (laughs) Well, unfortunately for you, I treat my friends worse than I treat my enemies. (laughs) That's true. That's true. Everyone remembers that uh, if we ran a Tender Shack episode, we we treat our friends horribly here (laughs) on this show, at least. Burn all the bridges. Burn all the bridges. Um, Lucas, I'm going to take a time out. I need to pop some Advil here. And and at the same time, I'm drinking beer. And I'll tell you why in a second. Ooh, that's a classic Max Payne combination right there. Well, it's not painkillers per se. It's just Advil. But all right, I did something real dumb. So I am, I am 37, going on 38 in what two months, month and a half. And uh, at work, so I work in an office environment, big bank, work for, and they they like to do like employee appreciation week where they do all special events all week long. Like uh, they had like cake here one day, and they had like a, a barbecue one day, and all these fun games outside. There's like a, a free throw contest, and they did like cornhole tournaments and cool things like that. Every year, so I've been with this job for three of these employee appreciation weeks. I participate in nothing, <laughs> nothing. I'm that employee that does a great job, but don't don't try and involve me in team building stuff because I really don't care. Like I'm not there for that kind of deal. Yeah. Um. The only thing. I- and it was like every day they'd send uh, trivia to the email and like the first person to respond with all the correct answers gets a prize. I would always do that because I'm like, I don't need to talk to anybody. Not This is a solo event that I can just win and take it for myself. Sure. Well, at work lately, um, we've been doing a lot of big projects that I've been put in charge of. So like there's a lot of attention on me all of a sudden, which number one makes me, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but I don't like having all the attention at a job and all the weight on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been doing well and people have been – very good about that, you know, acknowledging it, noticing it. And in the midst of all this process, our upper leadership, so not my direct manager, but higher than her, 
has all shifted. So now I have a new manager at that level, which turns out was the person I was doing the project for. So, okay, he already likes me. I'm doing a really good job. Everyone knows it. So I have to kind of play nice. So our department decided they wanted to have a kickball team in the tournament. Oh. Oh, no. So my 37-year-old non-athletic, non-doing much of anything said, okay, I'll do it for you, boss. I'll, I'll join the team. We'll play kickball. Now, every office has this guy. So, of course, there's somebody on my team who plays kickball in a league as yeah. an adult. Yeah. So there's this guy. Now, listen, I will preface this. I'm very happy I played with him versus against him. <laughs> but he said, okay, our game was uh, Wednesday. So yesterday from when we are recording. Um, let's practice on Monday. Let's just get him down the field. Just talk about the rules. Cause in my head, I'm like, well, it's like kickball and gym. No, no, no. There are drastically different rules in, in air quotes, real kickball. So we all go down to the field and he's actually being cool about it. And I was really afraid he wasn't going to be cool about this and be like a total D bag about the whole thing. Sure. But he's explaining the rules and like, it's weird. They don't time 30 minutes and you just go and whoever has the most points, that's the winner. So There's no it, innings or anything? No, like you still have outs in the innings golf, but you don't sit there and say, I'm going to play for five innings or seven innings. It's you gotcha. play as many innings as you can in 30 minutes. That seems really weird, but okay. Yeah. And like you can pitch it and yes, you can roll the ball, which is what I always thought it would be. But like you can actually bounce it. It just can't bounce more than twice. So he does this all the time. He's got this really crazy pitch that he can actually like curve the kickball and it bounces, which really screws you up because you go to kick it. Next thing you know, you're hitting it with like your knee. Hmm. But then he's like talking about the strategy. We're going to bunt here. He's like, I'm going to come up with all the calls. He's doing like the ear pull and the let, the knee tap thing. Tell us where to kick. So we do start the game uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, everybody's like warmed up. We're wearing matching uniforms. We're, we're, we work in a third party risk. So our, our team name was Risky Business. So we nice. all. Classic. So so we all dressed in white button down shirts and black shorts. <laughs> I was, yep. oh, was going to ask is like, did this guy come with a big box? And he's like, all right, I got shirts made up for you guys. What's I your wish. size? <laughs> that would have been great too. But no, so we did the Tom Cruise look all black sunglasses. So that was, that was fun. You know, that was, that was with it. But like, he is super aggressive about like, no, we need to win this. He's like, I, he's, cause he asked him, he goes, do you guys just want to play for fun? Or do you want to actually play to win? And we were all like, no, we want to win. Like we want to have fun, but we want to win. So he's like, all right, then you gotta listen to me. All right, let's do it coach. Now. He was like, you know, run bases as hard as you can. He was actually standing at the first base to be the coach if he wasn't kicking. So, like, he was playing like it was like, like a legit game. Hardcore. Wow. Wow. After the first inning, so we did the coin toss. We got to kick first, which is what he wanted because in a timed game, that's the advantage right there as you go first, right? We got nine runs in the first inning. Oh. Oh. <laughs> On a nine-person team. <laughs> so, Yeah. So then we field. He puts me at third base slash shortstop because it's less people in the field. So you have to kind of play multi roles, which I thought was a mistake. So like once again, I'm like, have you seen me? You're putting me in a <laughs> high prominent position. He's With pitching. Physique? Right. Look, as I can catch a kickball, you could rock it one of my face and I catch these things like and I caught one that like almost hit the ground. Like I did all these crazy catches. So it worked. Well, I mean, with your experience handling balls, I'm not really surprised. This is true. And video games, kids, hand-eye coordination. That's big. Very true. That's yep. what I keep telling my wife when my son yep. plays nine hours of video games a day. Yes, exactly. It's, it's all good. But long story short, we ended up winning the game 16 to nothing. Oh, my gosh. But now today I hurt a lot. Um, I found out probably a week before the kickball thing, after I already agreed to play, that I have not plantar fasciitis, you know, the foot thing. Yeah. It's plantar something else. And it's different where I have a mass of, like, tendon slash muscles in like the 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 ball of my foot mm -hmm. that if i put a lot of pressure on it sends like stinging pains all the way up my leg to my hip mm. yeah that's that's so it feels like you're being stung by a, a stingray constantly. exactly Anytime. exactly so a, as we're scoring this many runs we are constantly running the bases oh. and we play it on a legitimate <laughs> baseball field so it wasn't like oh it's a shorter field because we're just playing kickball it's like no yeah. i don't run lucas so I'm hurting a lot today, so that that's why the painkillers. And I'm stupid for doing it. And yeah. And the now, worst part is is we didn't win the whole tournament because the way they decided to do this was it wasn't going to be a bracket elimination. Everyone plays one game, and whoever scored the most points wins. So it wasn't really about who's the best team. It's like how bad were the people you got paired up with. Really. Yeah, that is really 
this was not thought out well at all. They no, should have made no. that other guy come up with the rules. Right. The, and it was, the rules it was guy. a three day basically event. Like games were played and t- the games wrapped up today and we were winning up until the last game today where that team scored 20. So we were like, Hey, what do you guys think about doing one more game? The top two actually play. And that person really is the winner because we shut our team out. They let their team score four or five runs. So we're like, you know, let's do it. And they're like, no, of course, because they got a trophy in their hand at that point. They're like, they're not going to yeah. do it. But it turns out that this team was comprised of people who played on other teams the other days. So these people played multiple games and took like the best of other teams and made like the super team. It was like the Olympics. What? Yeah. And they subbed people in and out, which that wasn't supposed to be allowed. So like so, as my leg is in pain and I wasn't moving that well by the time we got to the, my last at bat, I would have said, hey, you know, Tommy, come in. You're going to kick for me this one. I'm going to set this one out. But we didn't do that. We all sat through this, and none of us were great athletes. But this team was subbing people in and out. <laughs> like, what? how is this fair? So it's like when in um, sports games when people pick, like, all-star east or north or whatever, and then you just yep. pick a, a regular team, and you're like, yep. wait a minute. I didn't know we could do that. Come on. I had, I had a woman in her late 50s on our team. I had another Ugh. person who – her name is Jahan, lovely woman – doesn't even understand baseball, let alone kickball. So we had to actually teach her just that, like you run the bases when this happens, but if somebody <laughs> catches, you have to run back. And all this was done in a matter of an hour. Wow. And yet this team had a super team of like jocks, all guys, by the way. And we had, we were, we were a fair, equal balance team of male and female ratio. As so, you yeah. would expect in an yeah. office environment. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I'm bitter about that, but I'm also very sore. So, they, yeah. uh, they better have an asterisk on that trophy for, the, for these people. What mm. was their team name? I don't even know, to be honest. We had the best team name. I know that because I saw the list of okay. all team names. But... Not even memorable. Nope. No trophy for that, though. No trophy wow. for the best team. You should throw a stink for at least six months. Be like every day. Well, that guy Man. did. And he still was when I, when I left the office. <laughs> so I was like, Good. I can't be that guy. But that guy can be that guy because he's known yeah. as that already. So I'll stand behind him and nod. But as soon as yes. people start noticing, I'm, I'm I was like, there. yes, I agree. And then I left. You know? <laughs> yes, um, <exactly. laughs> you know, it is what it is. But anyway. What do you say we talk about video games instead of kickball, like like actual podcasts sure, or shit? Sure, sure. Talk about non-athletic things. I was gonna say things I don't really have to move for. I like exactly. that. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't really gotten a chance to talk in a normal show environment for a while, so we are gonna play a little bit of catch up, I think, with some of these games here. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let's. You go first. You go first. Okay. Okay. Well, really, the main thing that I've been playing has been linked to the past. I've I've sunk the most amount of time into this game i don't know exactly how long i've played but i would say it's probably at least 10 hours maybe 12 uh i've 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 talked about i've gotten as further or as far as i've ever gotten in this game um it's one of those games that i remember playing as a kid but i never really played it seriously and then i kind of moved on to the playstation because i never had a super nintendo and um because your parents didn't like you exactly thanks thanks for that i almost i was just about ready to move past that but you brought Sorry. it all right back. i guess we should have brought this up on the podcast again <laughs> it's okay it's okay I'll, I'll, we'll hug it out later okay oh thank goodness um so i always like started the game but never finished it and then that's the same with like emulating it or or checking it out mm. later um always just kind of like Hey, I got a great idea. Let's go back to Link to the Past. That was a great game. And then for some reason, I never just finished it. So you played that now, intro over and over again, that first castle piece, and then you stop every time. Basically, yep. Yeah. Like, all right, I've got the three um, medals of courage, wisdom, and power. How much more of this game could be left? We're done, right? We're good here. <laughs> yep. Um, so now that it's so convenient to play, I thought, you know what, maybe I should, for some reason I felt the the draw to play it again. And I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe I'll do it this time. Maybe I'll go and play this game. Um, I feel like it's one of those rites of passage. Yeah, you know, absolutely. you got You got to play this game. So I started it up and I, like I said, I've gotten the furthest I've ever got before. I I'm into the, um, the crystals or whatever, getting the, the, yeah. the so rescuing the princess, princesses yeah, yeah. or sages or whatever. I don't know. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying the game. It does actually, uh, age really well. Yeah. I feel like there's not really that much different, you know, besides some quality of life stuff. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind having to pause just to change your, uh, whatever you're using your item, you know, bombs, arrows, yeah. 
yeah. whatever. Because the game isn't as fast paced where you feel like you need to switch that much on the fly. There's like if it's a fight, you need the one thing. Yeah. You need the arrows, you need the bombs, you need the fire rod, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing I'm struggling with now that I'm in doing the, um, the, the sages is the order, like they're numbered, but I didn't know right. if I was supposed to follow the numbers. I just kind of went with whatever was closest and I ran into problems like, oh, I needed the hook shot and that type mm-hmm. of thing. And having not gotten this far before, I don't know where any of that stuff is now as a kid, I never understood that the fortune teller was telling you where to go. Right, yeah. If you, you were pay him fifteen, lost, they you. Yeah, yeah, you fi- pay him fifteen rupees, and he's like, "Uh, maybe you should go visit the lady at the end of the lake." Wink, wink. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, now it's completely obvious to me. So, right. so I've I've used that, and I have used a couple of guides where I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I I, wa- I don't want to get stuck here. Let's just continue. So, uh, overall, yeah, I'm enjoying it, and uh, I do feel like. Uh, we talked a little bit about it before the show. I do feel like I can see now where some of the design decisions in Breath of the Wild have have come into play. Because if you just jump into Breath of the Wild, uh, one of my biggest complaints was why do I need to fight anything? I can just right. walk right by them. Uh, you don't level up, and you know, in in open world RPGs, you're used to leveling up your character and unlocking skills and stuff like that. But here it's more about gathering items and items. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're almost like Batman. You're you're broadening your tool set. Yeah, so, you're just getting more gadgets. Yeah, exactly. So, ooh, inspector gadget. Do, Maybe do, that would have been do, a better do, <laughs> inspector do, 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 gadget. Um, so yeah, Link to the Past. Really digging it. Looks great, by the way, on the uh, SNES. Yeah, it does. Switch emulator. Um, so yeah, ha- having a having a good old time. I think I might actually beat this this Ew. time. That's the plan. You're close enough at this point. <laughs> might as well. I figured. I mean, how much? Like I said, how much more game can there be, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's a good old time. Having a having a blast with that. And then uh, I tried. I picked this up at the library. I saw it on the shelf because at our library they do rent out Switch games as well as other games okay. and uh, on other systems. And usually there's like 10 Switch games there. They have like 800 Xbox 360 games yeah. and PS4 games or three games and maybe a couple of the newer ones. But for some reason, the Switch, I don't know if it's just popular or or what. So I go through and I look through them and it's usually stuff I've never heard of. And this was one of them. It's called The Raven Remastered. The only difference is that this was the only like Japanese RPG looking thing that on there or that wasn't a Japanese RPG. Everything else on the shelf was like Japanese RPG. I yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. About, yeah. This Carol is on game. Switch. Yeah, I don't oh. know. I don't know anything about it besides it's a basically a point and click adventure game, right? Yeah. Um, made by THQ Nord or I guess um produced by THQ Nordic and made by King. Kings games or something like that. They do sure. adventure games. I can't yeah. remember what they're called. You'd If you saw the logo, you'd know who they are. I don't know anything about this game. I don't know how old it is. I don't even know what makes it remastered. Honestly, I didn't even know it was on switch. So here's, so here's the funny thing not to interrupt you. And I apologize for that. The THQ Nordic site. It doesn't even say it's on switch. That's why I was really confused. I thought you were talking about something else on your list that you were going to talk about. Oh, it says it's on PC, PS4, Xbox one and Apple Mac, Apple, the yeah, list King, Apple, but not King Art is the King, King Art, Art games. Is like, yeah, so THQ Nordic doesn't even list that it, this is a Switch game. That's so weird, man. Well, I can tell you that I did play it. Um, I believe you. Well, for all of you people who are like huh. jumping at the bit now to get to get this on your Switch because you know it's a, it's a highly sought after game. Uh, I like I like point and click adventures. You know, this isn't technically point and click. You move around with the. It actually feels more like Resident Evil because there's fixed cameras and you oh, move okay. around areas. Um, but you know, I it's it's kind of a serious game. It has beautiful music, by the way. It looks okay. Um, it has a decent setup. You're on a train, at least for the first chapter. You're on this train. And you see this very uh, prominent inspector guy, not an inspector gadget, unfortunately. <laughs> um, he loads up the safe and you're kind of an inspector yourself, a lower 
a lower class. I don't know how this all works. It's French. What do you want? No, no um, class shaming here. Gee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, so you play as this lower uh, inspector detective guy and he notices something must be up. So that's kind of the gist is like you're trying to figure out why this notable inspector guy has loaded up the safe. What's inside of it. You find out it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> and uh, you're going to help him try to figure out um, who uh, who this thief could be, uh, who has stolen something at a museum, yada, yada, yada. The whole point is it's an OK story. You know, it's not like fantastical or anything. It's pretty much set in realistic um, times, it, although it's, uh, you know, 1960s or 70s or something. Yeah, 1964. So there, there you go. Um Here's the problem. So you you move from screen to screen. You move from trained car to trained car. Low times are just killing me. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to figure out what to do. You pick up items and you're walking around and trying to do things and use things together. And every time you go to a different car, it's it's like 15 seconds. And oh you're only God. you're loading up one screen. And I, I mean, there's four cars to move between. So if the rest of the game is like that, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to pass on this one because it's too long. I probably could play this on PC. I might even have it. It looks familiar. It, uh, it is on Steam. The original game launched in 2013 on Steam. So not that long ago. No. But, yeah, I don't know. I just... No, I don't have it. <laughs> I, <was just> <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, it looked interesting, but that just kills it. Like, if I have to... Sure. If, if one screen's worth of, of of data is causing that much low time, then the whole game is going to be a problem. So, it seemed really cool. I'm kind of bummed, but uh, maybe I'll come back to it on a different platform and see how it performs there. Does it have a high-quality voice acting? Because it lists that as one of the, the selling points mm-hmm. on Nintendo's site. Middle of the road. It's kind of hard to tell because they're speaking English, but the guy has a French accent. Mm. I wouldn't say they're, you know, awful. None of them annoyed me. And there was a little kid in in the oh, train. Too. You have yeah. to talk to him. But it wasn't like it didn't seem like an older, like 30 something lady doing the voice of a kid. That's when mm-hmm. I get annoyed. That's, That's when, what, like, yeah, when it sounds too fake. So th- this was done by the same folks who created the Book of Unwritten Tales series. That's why I know them because yep. I played that. Yes, yep. yes. Uh, that's a good. That's a good one too. So it is. yeah, I can't really speak to it too much because I'm I'm just gonna try to play it on something else. You know, you, this is one of those games you're gonna get for like three dollars eventually or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll come back to it later. Uh, and then lastly, I only played a little bit of this, but everyone's talking about Gears Five, right? Just came out. Makes sense. Well, I'm over here, haven't had an Xbox in a long time. Uh, Gears 4 did come out on PC, but I just never got yeah. around to playing it. And uh, with this whole Game Pass thingy, it's on there, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should probably start at Ga- Gears 4 before I play Gears 5. Agreed. Um, so I, 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 I installed it. It's a huge game. It's like 130 yeah. gigabytes or something like that, uh, which was awful. And uh, I did like the first mission. Now I remember this game looking re- like really awesome in in promotional yeah. material when I yeah. when it first came out. Now it's just kind of like, oh, okay, this is like what first generation Xbox One. Yeah, it was uh, a, it was a very it, early game. Um, I will shows. say though, the the second the Gears Five, the environments are much better. So it might look better. It's less dreary all the time. Like, cause I remember Gears 4 being like dreary. It's like rusty, reddish brown. Dirty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gears that there are drastically different environments you go into. That I think that helped it a little bit. Nice. But I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, I don't have much. I mean, I will say this: it was very easy to just drop right in. I've only played all of one and some of two when they first came out, and then mm-hmm. never again. But I will tell you, like, it was all the controls felt exactly the same. It was like coming home. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I know this place. Let's do it. So I'm intrigued by the story. It's doing this interesting flashback thing where mm-hmm. you're seeing um, the speech given. And so I've done like a little bit of this flashback and uh, I'm going to continue. I played as the the grunt guy who nobody knows his name. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by it and I think I'm going to play more. Okay. That's the plan right now. Anyways, 
Yeah. Uh, and I and I'm glad to see that they have a plethora of PC settings. Oh, I looked yeah. at it and I'm just like, there's stuff in here I don't even know what it does, but I'm gonna set it to ultra and hope that my rig can run it. So <laughs> hope it doesn't explode. <laughs> I like I like looking at the comparisons between high and ultra sometimes in games because it's like in a screenshot you can barely tell, so you know that when it's like running. You you have no clue, anything. but it's gonna knock twenty frames off of your. Like, it's gonna actually run worse in ultra mode. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, and then lastly, I just want to mention I took back the Raven remastered today. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh, I'm not gonna play this. Uh, I picked up uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That's Never played it. Uh, I I started it with my son. And he's not gonna be able to play it. At least not he can, seriously. He can he mess can play around. Plays Funky Kong. Yeah, well, when we started the game, he first he wanted to be first player, which still means he can be Funky Kong. Sure. But he doesn't know what he's doing. He just wants yeah. to get to the game, so he's smashing A. So I was stuck as the old guy. I didn't even get to pick oh, my character. Oh, you were I'm cranky? Just looking, <laughs> yeah, I was cranky, and I'm just like, well, okay, great. I didn't want to pick my character. Thanks. Jeez. But he's like, I just want to play. Come on. I shoved him off the couch. You don't Thanks, even know what you're jerk. doing. Poof. <laughs> exactly. so we'll have to maybe set it back up but i plan on yeah. playing by myself that's a good game to make it, it looks amazing mm-hmm. like i hate to say it you know no controversy here but how can this game look as good as it does and then Link's awakening runs the way that it does i know that's it's older we isn't it a wii u title that is a, yeah, yeah, is yeah brought up mm-hmm. so um but yeah looks colorful looks great doesn't have that weird um lower resolution thing like yoshi crafted yoshi's crafted world looks kind of soft in comparison you know what i mean yeah yeah i get that i yeah. don't understand why but it has I think it was the design aspect. choice that didn't quite work out with crafted world because everything's supposed to look fake that's true i wonder so I too like the textures and stuff there's right. a, like, like donkey kong there's more textures with yoshi you don't get that it's like well I, I feel like they're colorful whereas with yoshi they're trying to make it look like paper or yeah, yeah. You know, that type of thing. So I wonder if that has something to do Probably. with it. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not a game designer. So that's I, Shaq. We don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know anything about video games. What am I doing here? So uh, that's what I've been doing. Cool. Cool. Um, so I did beat Gears 5 and I talked about that a bit last week. So I'm not going to get into that with, with you here because it's fine. I still haven't right. played the multiplayer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. I heard what you said. I multiplayer it's rolling it's diving or rolling around with a shotgun like pretty much i don't yeah. but I, but i'm not i don't want to do the player versus player stuff i want to do like the the pve stuff so they have like the horde mode and they have um survive which is similar to horde but with a different premise like those ones i want to play i have no interest in playing it competitively against somebody else because of the the gun mechanics like yeah. it's fine if you're just playing the game but i feel like if you're trying to play competitive it's like your people dive when they're not supposed to dive your cover doesn't work right all the time you're like the whole timing of the reload thing is annoying in, in that type of environment like it doesn't it yeah. doesn't feel conducive to multiplayer for me but in that pvp style, style Ma- yeah it makes sense you got people chasing you around it's not like in the game where you're just like going from wall to wall and slowly making your own pace basically yeah yeah I'm I'm too spoiled by Apex, which is way too quick to be like I'm gonna clunkily move around and attack people. <laughs> cool. um, but what I am playing, uh, I went back to Devil May Cry now that I finished Gears Five and I finished Blair Witch, which we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so I'm still enjoying Devil May Cry Five, uh, which is funny because Donnie thought I was going to hate the characters in this game for some reason, and I think it's because one of the characters, your shopkeeper, uh, except she travels around in a, in a van. And yeah, I remember you, you talking about this. Yes, yeah, so you go into the phone booth and the van just comes crashing in no matter where you are to sell your upgrades. So she has that accent that's it's a very fake southern accent like over the yeah, top. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, I remember. So, so that's kind of the only only mild Hey, in, darling. In, exactly. It's, <laughs> Here's it's some shotgun much. shells for you. Exactly. So I'm like, eh, I could deal without that. But I'm still involved with the game. Like the, the character and enemy design is is really really cool and amazing. Like it's very gory and just gross because they're like demons and bugs and stuff like that. like it's just well done in that regards yeah and the action is a lot of fun i don't worry too much about like what are they call the devil breakers like the special combo things like so much about that like i'm just playing the game and, and killing stuff and having fun so uh, do they rank you in this game like, yeah yeah like each mission stuff? you get like a b a b c d and then like s is like s super you get higher yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I don't pay too much attention. I've gotten a couple S's, I've gotten a couple A's, and I've had one of those blank B's or C's. Ultimately, I really don't care because I'm just let, let's get through the level, let's win. That's all I really care about because there's not really 
I'm playing this get, for the story. <laughs> I kind of am. Yeah. Uh, but like the only advantage you get for a higher rank is you get more of the currency to buy your upgrades, which a lot of the upgrades are like more combo stuff and further combos. I'm like, I'm already not worrying about the combo, so I don't yeah. really care if I can pull off a, a longer one. Like it doesn't matter. Um, but the two characters you play as, I find intriguing. I can't remember one of them's name, but one of them, one of them is V and that's the character I was finally able to just play this last time I played it. And he, the other guy plays just like Dante essentially where he's got, you know, the giant sword and you got the gun and that's kind of what he does. V is like, a wizard almost so he walks around with, with a cane and a book and he summons these shadow demons to do his fighting for him so you're not actually attacking Ooh. with him you send out a giant panther and a giant like raven and those act independently as your weapons as if you had two it's almost like a twin stick shooter essentially like you're controlling the, those demons for you um he's not a wizard he doesn't have a beard no, he doesn't. He I looks like Chris Angel. Dis- yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You, talk, yep. you talked about him. He is very disappointing looking. Yes. But I like him. He's more fun to play as, I think, so far for me. But I'm still really early. Like I said, I just did the first mission as him. Um, so that's the first time I've gotten to experience him. But I, I like it, and I'll keep playing it because I need something to, to break out the time. But what I did dive into, Lucas, again, because I was very disappointed. We had all these rumors of Batman coming. They're going to announce a new Batman game. PlayStation did their state of play. We all thought Batman was going to be shown there. It wasn't shown there. Then Xbox that same night did their uh, inside Xbox. We're like, well, it wasn't on PlayStation, so Xbox has got to announce Batman. They did not announce Batman. We still have no Batman game yet that they've been teasing for weeks. WB is just like, oh, what are we doing? We should have did a Batman game. Everyone's expecting it. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did do is I went back and I'm playing Batman Return to Arkham, which is the first. It's like the remaster of Arkham Asylum, the first one that they did. (sighs) Yes. Now, this is the only game I've played twice because I played it on okay. Xbox 360, then PC, PC. when I okay. when I um got because those those games, for some reason, go on sale for like five dollars a piece, yep. too. Yeah. So. Yep. so and, and how is it when you did when you played it on PC? Was it the return to Arkham Edition or was it no. the. Ooh. OK, so I will I say I, I'm impressed with the little remaster. I do kind of like air quotes. That they did on this. Like, it looks a lot better than I would remember it because I hadn't played it since the PS3. Instantly in my head, I'm like, well, this game isn't going to look that good. And I'm playing on Xbox One S, so not even the X. And it looks really good. And okay. Surprisingly, the mechanics hold up, which I was like, this might feel like an old... I'm having a ton of fun again. Like, I am I am literally enjoying the hell out of this. That combat system, man. It's just I, so good. It is. I love it. And the, the gadgets again and kind of going through the story. And I remember bits and pieces of the story. So some of it's feeling familiar again, but some of it's like I feel like I'm doing better this time. Like I'm finding more Riddler stuff now like because I kind of understand it better because they mm-hmm. kind of repeat throughout the series. So I know what I'm doing more now in this one. Um, the only thing that really doesn't do well with the remasters, I think some of the facial animations, it, it seems like Batman will say more than his face is saying in a cutscene a little bit uh so like it looks like they didn't remaster those parts but i'm completely i'm totally fine with it i'm having a blast with the game otherwise so I, I'm, I'm probably gonna end up going on a batman streak here and playing through the arkham series i think is what i'm getting at again plus it, plus i mean he's voiced by uh Kevin conroy yes exactly the only the bat- batman that yep. we ever uh can i just say really quick it's not to do with video games but is to do with batman i watched yeah. a batman animated movie i think it was bad blood and whoever yes. voiced batman in that no, no, no. I don't like it. He sounds... I'm trying to remember who it is. I, if I remember, it was somebody He's done more than him. one. Yeah, he's... He... But it was somebody I was like, I don't want him as Batman. No, he uh, just sounds... He sounds like he's talking like this when he's Batman. I'm just like, no, please stop it. Now I need to find out because it's going to bother me if I don't. I didn't recognize him, but I know he's done Jason more O'Mara. Who's there done, it is. Who's done Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's done video game work. I, I know that. Yes, he's voiced. Yeah, he has voiced Batman a bunch of things. He did in Batman Hush, Reign of Superman. He was Batman. Death of Superman. Yeah. Hashtag Justice, not Justice my League versus Teen Titans, Bad Blood. Yeah, he's done. Son of Batman, which Son of Batman was a good one. I don't remember that he did that one. I don't think I did that. One. I don't think I've watched that one yet. That was a good one. But yeah, he was also on Grey's Anatomy. If you're into that kind of stuff. Oh, definitely. Which season? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, 2008. He was in two episodes. Oh, so hey, we're getting, getting really? sidetracked. But yeah, I I I, I kind of hate like why don't you just pay Kevin Conroy to do them all? Like what else does he do? I'm pretty sure Kevin Conroy does nothing else but voice Batman. Yeah, I think he's made a pretty nice living off of him doing that. And then I don't know, yeah. going to 
cons yeah Comic-Cons, Comic-Cons. i guess yeah. yeah so like just pay him just he's batman all right can we just settle that he's batman yeah stop just stop okay. um so yeah i'm gonna keep playing those so the last thing we should talk about a little bit because we've both played it and beaten it and i think i'm pretty sure you beat it before i did blair rich yes so the xbox game pass day and date release game um I, I talked about it a little bit, and I didn't want to get too spoil- spoilery last time, but I think we can be a little bit spoilery here. I feel like some okay. people are going to play it in October, so I don't want to give away like everything, but I would don't be concerned with, with giving away details, I feel like. So if you're really that concerned with it, everybody, like stop for uh, and then come back. But I, we're not going to get too spoilery, I don't think. So um, overall, impressions? Um, well... I completed the game fairly quickly for me. Um, so that says something. It's it has a little bit of 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 um it's not a triple A game. Let's just put it that way. It had a right. little bit of of weirdness to it, you know, right off the bat. I mean, I've played with my visual settings for like I don't know, 15 minutes before I got something that, and I kept flipping back. I was like, do I want it to look good or do I want it to play good? Right you know, well, yeah. cause I'm, I just couldn't believe that I had to uh, knock it down so far. Uh, but you know, that was only really half the story. It also came down to the content of the game. And that's really what hooked me. Um, mm-hmm. There was a lot of like psychological stuff going on and I jokingly called it a uh, fire witch because, you know, you're walking <laughs> around with a walkie talkie in the woods, yeah. but it's not really about the conversations and stuff. There is stuff happening around you um, as you're going along. And there is an interesting mechanic with the tapes and everything. So this was like all coming together because I was really just expecting like Blair, Witch the movie, but as a video game, right. and I'm glad it wasn't that hey, because you know, it needed to be fleshed out a little bit more for a video game. So there was a lot here that was keeping me going. And a lot of it had to do with the narrative and the character and how that character's past was basically used against him to mess with him. And I enjoyed that. Um, And that's why I think I I appreciated that it wasn't like the movie because it wasn't just creaky, you know, sounding like trees falling in the woods and stuff like that. Like it was in the movie, it was actual personalized um, pieces of information from this character's past that was used against him. And that lets you learn about the character in a non expositional way, which is always nice because then I don't have to hear him tell me about his life. You know, I just get to see it, which is nice. It's a video game. Show me show. Don't tell. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just uh, it had a really interesting story and I, it hooked me and I, I played through it because of it. Right. Yeah, I agree. The, the psychological stuff was a nice touch. And like you said, it wasn't just Blair Witch. You hear some rocks being thrown. What was that in the woods? Like, I mean, there is some of that for sure, because it has to a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they did it. They, what they did do really well, I think, was give you that feeling of, of feeling lost in the woods. And like alone some, in the woods. Yeah, like sometimes there was clear paths, but there was sometimes I was walking and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going the right way. And most of the time I think I was. I don't think I ever felt like I needed to be turned back around and go back, but I didn't feel confident in where I was going most of the time. Yeah. And I think that was a deliberate narrative because of you feeling alone. You just have the dog, um, which the dog mechanic was. Overall, I feel like they did it okay. Um, the one mechanic I really didn't like, and this isn't really spoilery, is, is when you encounter air quotes enemies in the game Mm -hmm. and you have to shine the flashlight on them but the dog will point out where it's barking to where they are so you can shine the flashlight we need to see well you can't see the dog in your frame of view so you're constantly looking down to see where the dog is looking to then look back up and by then it might have moved so i found that part frustrating yeah it wasn't very accurate a lot of the time i found it gave me the general vicinity and then even even if he shows you right on where these uh, monsters are. Sometimes you had to like actually tilt up and down to yes. like kind of go farther back in the background because they're behind a tree or something and you were a little bit too far down and or far forward. And so, yeah, yeah it was a little finicky, especially in the area where you're at that logging camp in the yes. complete blackness, which yep. was scary, but also <laughs> a little frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I played the entire game in the dark with headphones on. 
Um, nice. So that was fun. That got me in the mood for it. Overall, I'm, I'm happy with the game. Um, what was the other point I was going to make? Shoot. Oh, so PC games. Did you play the old Blair Witch games? Like I've t- I know I've talked about it before, and I know Josh knows of them. I think Josh said he played them. But I don't know. Did you play that series? of There was three games that came out after the Blair Witch I movie. know of them because I remember this was the point. They came out around the time that I was still reading like PC Gamer magazine and stuff. Yeah. So I remember yeah, yeah. seeing them. But I know I know like about them, not what they're about, but I know they really expanded on the lore. Right. And they were kind of point and click adventure games, weren't they? Um. Or adventure games at the very least. It kind of more like adventure games. Like there was still combat, a like Resident Evil. Like you were always looking over the shoulder, but the mm-hmm. combat was very minimal and more. So it was more like you were walking around doing the exploration okay. And stuff. Okay. And piecing the other things. So that, that that's kind of where I was going though. But the the lore that they built, they kept some of that in this game and that shows. So I know that's probably going to appeal to virtually nobody because I don't think a lot of people play those games. But if you did the best part of those games was that back lore that they built and that you didn't really get from the Blair Witch movies. Like they built this really rich history of what happened and how it happened and how the witch um, presents herself, if you will. And that was carried over into this game. So it seems like the developers had that source material down pretty well, which was nice. The tape mechanic that you brought up before, that was something initially I was nervous about when they first showed that trailer. Like, Hey, you have these magical tapes that you can use to alter the time. (laughs) I was really concerned about that. I did not have a problem with that. I like what they did with them actually. Like I was perfectly okay with them. Overall. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I w- I was also kind of worried. I was like, is this just going to be, um, Outlast or something? Right. You can you can walk around with the camera, and that does come up eventually, but not yeah. in the way that you would expect. Um. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mind it, although. That's like one of those things you don't want to think too hard about. Like, how are yeah. these getting here? Where are right. they coming from? That's kind of like the the gamey part of it. Sure. Um. But yeah, uh, they didn't I did abuse have... it. They didn't use it too much either. It wasn't no, they... constantly doing the tape. So that's true. That's true. It kept its mystique because mm-hmm. every time you did it, something different happened and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, it did cause me to crash one time. I had cra- one crash oh, right. in this game and uh, I had to reload because it saves like a checkpoint system. Yep. And uh, it was when I was rewinding one of those tapes oh. um, and when that happened, I had to go back and I couldn't find my way again. I don't know how I got there the first uh, time. So I got there within like two minutes the first time. And then the second time I'm like, man, which way did I go? And I kept going around in a circle and I'm like, is the game messing with me or am I really not really lost? <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty effective. Cool. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the, the not ending, but the final act. And I know you know what yes. I'm talking about. Yes. That was nuts. Uh, I will say that this is where like, the game stops pulling any punches and it just brings the crazy to you yes. to, to the point a little bit that it almost overstayed its welcome a little bit with me, Agreed. but I'm okay with it because I think like it, it just brought it all out and it made me kind of reflect back on the entire game saying, all right, that journey was cool enough to get to that ending. I guess kind of similar to my opinions on gears where it's like most of the game is, eh, but the ending is really cool. And I wish I could just play the whole ending. Like, but yeah, yeah, the payoff really is worth it in this game uh they they really slow burn it up to that point um there's a couple of sequences that you're just like what is going on but for the most part it stays pretty low key and you're just like when is it gonna go down and uh yeah that last act kind of brings blair witch together like you're like okay this is straight up blair witch now um like you said it's a little long yeah I felt like it was a little long because there's um, probably one of the most annoying parts was having to find the the key. Yes. Yep. Like not to spoil too much, but there's some item finding and you're just like, oh, really? This it broke the immersion for me. I'm like, can you imagine being <laughs> in the movie? Just yeah. hold on. I got to wander around this house, find a key. I mean, what? I didn't mean to. Is that a spoiler? No, there's a house, guys. There's a house yeah. in the Blair Witch movie, too. So Okay, good. Which is just so, funny, because these houses are, like, hundreds of years old. Could you not just kick the door in? Like, do you really need the key? The house is barely yeah. standing. Like, let's be honest. It's a witch, man. It's magical power holding that but thing the, But the key is what is what takes down the magic? Well, they probably shouldn't have made a key in the first place. Yeah, that's, that's a good true. point. Um, Multiple endings, yes. right? Yep. I'm assuming you got the same ending as me. I think so. We probably shouldn't talk about it on air, but I think we, no, I no. Think we mentioned are, it. Are, 
are you going to try for it? Like, no, to me, no, the game's ending is the ending that I got, unless yeah. it's impossible to get a different ending without playing again. Yeah. In I, which case, I'm just like, I'm not going to play it again anyway. I've read the others, and it's nothing worth me saying, okay, I'm going to go through the whole thing to see this last piece. I'm okay. Gotcha. Okay. And I'm, I'm okay with what happened to the point that I'm not, like, pissed. I'm like, oh, forget this whole game. Like, I'm okay with what happened. Yeah. Same here. Same so. here. Um, so, so lastly, for those people, because I know a lot of people are sleeping on this game and not a lot of people have played it, yet we talk about all the time how everybody has Game Pass. Yeah. Would you recommend for somebody, especially if they have Game Pass, give this thing a shot? If you find yourself liking horror games or if you suspect that you would like this, it is not a waste of time. It's a mm-hmm. good one. Um, at the very least, wait until October, get in the mood, and then play it. Um, there's nothing keeping you from playing it, I would say. Okay. It's worth it. All right. I said my piece last week. I said I, I would recommend people play it if they're into that type of thing or the walking simulator games. Uh, there's enough there that I think would – yes, it's a horror walking simulator, but you might still get some enjoyment out of it if you're not into – like it's not super horror gory jump scares. Like It's not It's not like that. It's more no. psychological horror. I um I heard the, the most – the scariest thing is the stuttering that occurs when you try to play the game on an Xbox One X. That's just Donnie, because I played I played on the lowly Xbox One S, and I didn't have any issues with my game. Just saying, mm, Donnie maybe. finds stuff. He's got he's got like a debugged Xbox One X. I'm convinced, like he has somebody that it belonged to a play tester before that they go and search for things to go wrong because he finds them all <laughs> in every game. Oh, he's got to turn the debug mode off. That's it. Go to options, Donnie. Turn debugging off. That must be really frustrating. That's the stuff that keeps me up at night. That's the stuff that keeps me from playing a game, and then I'm just tinkering with settings for two hours, and then I see. I'm glad. That's why I'm glad I don't do PC because I don't need to worry about too many settings. Mine is like you boot up the game is like adjust your brightness, uh, put the frames in the edges of your TV, and then I'm ready to go. Like I don't need to do anything else. How many? What is the deal with that? We all have 16 by 9 TVs. Nobody has 16 by 10 TV. Get out of here. But I have to adjust it every Stop. single time. Brightness I get because certain games, and I like it a little bit yes. better than what they recommend most of the time. Just slightly. But yeah, I'm, I'm not to go with the recommended settings in those. But yeah. Anyway, we spent a lot of time on that. We did. We got some questions. Should we get to them? Let's get to them. All right. Time to check out the messages. Message for you, sir. So these came from our Discord. The first one is from the Kaiju Guy. Simply burgers versus chicken sandwiches. Fart. No contest. no contest. So what's your answer? Let's say it together at the same time. Three, okay. two, one. Burgers. burgers. Yeah. yeah. Burger boys. Yep. There, there's just there's too many options with burgers that you can do so many different things. Whereas chicken sandwich, yes, you could do a lot there too, but it doesn't feel to be as inspired or to take on everything like a burger you can put certain agreements and it changes like the whole dynamic of, of the your flavor palette here's where we're going so, to food territory but chicken sandwiches is like no this just tastes like chicken with cheese on it or make it like it's just it you know it's gross a grilled chicken sandwich i was gonna say that the only good chicken sandwich is like the crispy chicken sandwiches because grilled chicken sandwiches are just gross <laughs> they are it's like hey do you want a chicken breast on two pieces of bread mm-hmm. no i'll just have a i will have a lean clean protein chicken dinner without the bread if i was going to do that right right well, you, could, you could put some grilled chicken in a chicken caesar salad that's about it like it's not you know what is good though mm. i don't even know if this is a i mean i guess it's technically a chicken sandwich but okay. uh shredded chicken like barbecue shredded chicken oh, pulled chicken bar- yeah. yeah it's a barbecue yep. pork now we're talking yeah but but just a chicken breast on a, on a sandwich no thanks Mm-mm. get it out of here so real quick Stop. then Favorite kind of burger, then? Your ideal burger. Ooh. See, I was always a fan of, like, the cowboy burger, so to yes. speak. The bacon good... with the onions and the uh, – onions of all different kinds. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's onion rings. Sometimes it's those, like, caramelized onions. onions. Yep. It could just be red onions. It's fine. I'm not picky. Bacon, cheese. Here's the problem. They started putting the caloric information on the menus, oh, and God. now you realize it's 1,500 calories, and you're like, okay, never mind. Yep. The barbecue sauce will get it because of the sugar in the barbecue sauce. Oh, so. but that's why it's so good. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a fan of the, the, the blue burger with the blue cheese Ooh, the and blue the bacon. Cheese. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's it's a little um it's a little too uh exotic. Too much funk too much funk for you? 
I don't know. I've never really had blue cheese. Really? I've had feta. I mean, I've I've had it, but I've yeah, not yeah. been like, oh, I'm having blue cheese. Oh, you dude, know, I'm it. going to remember this for the rest of my life. Love it. Um, so there you go. That's that. Donnie hops in over on Twitter, which it's not really a question, but we, we can still answer it. And I think we can answer on three, just like we do burgers. Donnie asks, can I come on the show and talk in about an hour for The Last of Us 2? Ready? Three, yeah. two, one. No. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I haven't played Last of Us 1, and I want to, and we just talked about Blair Witch for an hour, so we don't have time. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right, so serious question came in, though. Super Nintendo asked yes. in the Discord, how does it make you feel that our children, not so much you because yours are still young, but just kids of today, think of it this way, will be looking back at Fortnite in 20 years the way we do Goldeneye? This one hurt. Yes. The problem, the difference is that Fortnite will probably still be going in 20 years because we can't let anything die now. <laughs> It's like, oh, no, they just added, um, I don't know, President Trump in there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you because imagine? Because it'll, it'll be far enough removed that that'll be okay. It'll Whereas be Gold and I, I mean, we are trying to resurrect it still. And we always but... try and resurrect it, yeah. Yeah, that that does hurt, though. It does. And it, it's not, I mean, it's kind of a knock at Fortnite for being the kind of game it is. And, and by all means, you call me out on it. I spent tons of time playing Fortnite. I won't deny that. But the thing is, I never once said, like, this is a classic game that will stay in the test of time. Like, you talk about Link to the Past. Like, hey, that's a rite of passage to beat Link to the Past. I feel like nobody's going to be like, oh, yeah, I never played Fortnite. And someone's going to be like, what? You know, 20 years <laughs> yes. from now, I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? You're not a gamer. You never played Fortnite. Like, I just don't feel like it's going to be like that. But the hindsight, you're right. It could just still be going on in 20 years. It's just it's that nostalgia thing. I feel like. We, meaning me, and I mean you're younger, but like our generations can think back and be like, hey, I really loved this game. And I feel like kids growing up with games now don't have that attachment to them. Like it's kind of like, oh, this is the hot game for now. This is what I'm going to play. And then the new hot game comes out and that's what I'm going to play now. And like they don't hold on to things. Like because who's really going to come back as a kid and be like, oh, man, I loved Minecraft as a kid. Yeah. I I just don't feel like it's there. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe I'm delusional, but I don't know. The other thing about Goldeneye is that to play that with friends, you had to be in the same room. And Ooh. with Fortnite, not really, unless you're at the li- unless you're there. the kids at the library who all just get <laughs> together and swear and play Fortnite. And I'm just like, my son, come on, man, stop swearing. This is a library. <laughs> Here, kids, you should play the Raven Remastered. I'm returning it now. <laughs> it's about French history. <laughs> come on, learn something. Uncultured swine. <laughs> so yeah i don't know i don't know um so the the last question we have here is from tom servo and this is a good one i thought uh ties a little bit into a news article we talked about last week with josh but he's curious why more people aren't concerned that paid subscription game streaming services may make the perceived value of games go down the toilet every game will be in air quotes a throwaway game uh game developers might start getting paid the same way music artists get paid for right now with streaming services you know less than a penny per stream uh, it may even change the way people develop games, making binge-worthy games instead of games we see today that like have, like like uh, I think what he means is like a Destiny, where it's like, hey, that your development cycle, and they're still making stuff for it. Like it's an evergreen game. Where now, if it's going to be the streaming way, it's just get as many clicks as possible up front and move on to the next thing. Um, I I see Tom's point. And and this is what I always thought about Game Pass. I always question, how does Microsoft pay people with Game Pass? Like, how is this as successful? But developers are saying, I don't know how true it is, that they're still selling the games. Like, people play on Game Pass, and their sales go up. But in my head, I'm like, I, I'm not buying a game I played on Game Pass. Like, that's the whole point of Game Pass. But one point I do completely agree with him is the perceived value of games. So looking at these Game Pass exclusive games, the games that Microsoft are releasing, so your Gears, your Forza... Um, your Halos that are going to be coming out, Sea of Thieves, uh, State of Decay. Those are all games I got to play on Game Pass for my subscription that's already being paid for. I didn't have to shell out 60 bucks. So after I beat the game, and I kind of just rushed through the game, so I'm like, I can get on to these next games. I don't appreciate them, I think, as much. It's it's kind of weird, but he's kind of right. Like When I think about the best games I've played this year, uh, I've played every Game Pass exclusive that's been you know Xbox first-party ones, and I've enjoyed half of them but I don't think any of them would crack my favorite games of the year. And I don't know if it's because of that. Why well, just have this as opposed to me seeking this game out and, and playing it mm-hmm. like Donnie, Donnie gets a lot of flack for saying like far cry five has been one of his favorite game experiences in the last year. 
well, that's a game that was purchased. We didn't get it through Game Pass. I bought it for him. It's, you know, he played it. He absolutely loved it. I'm in the same camp. Like these Far Cry games, I'm having more memorable fun with down the line than when I think back and think of Crackdown, which I really liked. But overall, if I put the two together, I'm like, nah, Far Cry is a better game. And I don't know if it's because of that attachment or not. I think it's because Far Cry is a better game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. But, but Gears, so Gears would be the same thing for me, though, too. Yeah. I enjoyed Far Cry more than I enjoyed Gears. Both great games. Here's, both visually good, but yeah. Here's the other thing that I'm more worried about. is like you, if you want to compare it to Netflix, I guess, because it's mm-hmm. more like Netflix than it would be a music streaming service. It's true. You're, if you're relying on that, then your games are cultivated for you by a third party. And that worries me more than anything because – then they start looking at what does what what is popular, what do we want to bring to the streaming service because, you know, every kid's playing Fortnite, so let's just get a Fortnite clone up there. And then we lose out on some of the I don't want to say indie games because those ones are you know, those are also selling. Uh sure, but right, like a Blair right like, like a Blair Witch may not have been Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily say it, it's not a, it's not a super yeah, it's not a big genre. Like yeah, it's it's semi timely because Halloween's coming up, but that's really kind of it. Like it's yeah. a franchise people don't think about. You know, you don't you know like man, I could go for another Blair Witch game, but when they showed it, everyone was like, Blair Witch like yeah. they got excited for it. So yeah. Yeah. It's like those weird double A games. You were talking about double A games. It's that kind of stuff I think will will kind of fall by the wayside a little bit Mm. and for everybody who like like you said why why would you continue down um a multi-console road if you can do game pass and then you're in that ecosystem i mean i guess like if you have the switch you're kind of used to that to a certain degree not as as a slam but i mean if you're part of an ecosystem it does happen but i don't know i think it even gets farther down into the like I really do feel like Microsoft is kind of, you know, curating these games for what they think is best for their game pass. And Mm. I don't know, that could be detrimental too, but the perceived value of games to me, I don't know. I've always just, I value game. However much I value it for its experience, not really how much I paid for it, but that's me. I can understand that that's different for everybody. So yeah. By all means, I, w- I want developers to be paid because we see so many go yes. out of business now or get cut because of things not selling well. As as opposed to kind of play devil's advocate and almost argue the opposite of what Tom is saying is that well maybe this is a way for developers to keep their jobs because their games are being played. If we just threw it out in the wild, certain games maybe like Blair Witch wouldn't sell at all. But because Microsoft is highlighting it saying, hey, this, this is coming true. to our platform. You get to play it right away. I feel like more people are trying it. So maybe it gives them a chance. Maybe... There's these deals that are happening behind the scenes. We saw last week we talked about Control getting $9 million from Epic just to be an exclusive. That's not even counting their sales. It's like, hey, $9.7 million if you release it just on our platform. Who's to say Microsoft isn't doing the same or similar thing for games going on Game Pass? Saying like, okay, yes, you'll get a cut of how many times your game is played or downloaded or however they measure that. But I'm also going to give you $5 million to bring this to our platform right off the bat. And I think for some of these developers that are struggling to stay afloat or struggling to complete their games, these paychecks are the way of making that happen or getting them started on their next title after the line. So it may actually be a savior in some cases, depending on how you look at it. Like, yeah, to an EA, it's not a big deal because they're multi-billions a year. But to somebody that handles these games, like the developers of Blair Witch who did Layers of Fear, like they're not they're not a big developer. So that's maybe their way of staying alive is by taking on these projects and getting these paychecks and, and working off that. So it might be a better than if we tried to do it on our own type arrangement i think what i would like to see is for them to be a little bit more translucent about how this works yes i would love to actually know i agree and then i think we would be okay (laughs) that's true that's true so there's your answer tom let's let's hound xbox let they tell us how this works (laughs) let's wait for this corporation to tell us all their secrets you hear that phil spencer get out i normally say don't at me bro but in this case at me bro slide into the dms i want to know i want to know and Lucas and I are not above taking a paycheck either if you need some people to, to do inside Xbox and actually put on a good show for once. Just saying. We could do it. We can do it. I would love that. Yeah. Corporate corporate shills, that's what we'll be. Speaking of which, we have a Patreon. My kids need to eat so bad. <laughs> they haven't eaten since the last time you plugged the Patreon, actually. So It's true. For just for just pennies a day, folks. Um, I, that's all we got for messages, so thank you everybody for sending those in. We do appreciate it, and we, we have fun with the fun ones, and we... 
hope you enjoyed the, the conversation. Get us thinking about things we normally wouldn't think about. But it's been a week. So with that, we have to check out the news of the week. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite news outlet on the Citadel. So speaking of Game Pass, there are some new titles coming to Game Pass, or actually came to Game Pass, like, what, today? Something. Yes, because today's the 26th, so today as we're recording it, uh, they, they slid in some last-minute games hitting Game Pass before the end of the month. Uh, Bad North has hit Game Pass, Dirt Rally 2.0, and Lego Worlds. And for those of you who are playing on PC, like my buddy Lucas over here, you don't Hi. get Lego Worlds, which is okay, because you have it via Humble anyway, but you got Bad North and Dirt Rally 2 is added to the Game Pass on PC as well as consoles. So there you go. Last minute ones they slide in. They typically don't do it this late in the month, but you know they they release in September. They had games come out on September 5th, September 6th, September 12th, September 19th, and September 26th. That's so they nice release games trip. like every week. Yeah, it's yeah. it's nice. Now not every game's for everybody, but there's a lot of cool things in there. So yeah, good on them. You gonna play? You gonna play? Do you have Bad North already? I think we talked about that before. No, I know no, it was North Guard. He- yeah, yeah, that was the weird RTS one. Yep, no, yep. I, Bad North Jason played, I believe. Oh, okay. We'll so see. I'm familiar with it, and it looked cool. Okay, fair enough. Um, with that, Games with Gold for next month have been announced, and gamers can get um, a little bit this month. Um, you get uh, Disney Bolt on Xbox 360, <laughs> which is backwards compatible, so it'll work cool. on your Xbox One. Uh, and Tembo, oh the my badass gosh. elephant on Tembo. Xbox One. I remember that game. Yep. Um, so those will be available. Uh, Tembo will be available all month. Disney Bolt will only be available until October 15th. The other Xbox One game is Friday the 13th, okay. which uh, Josh kind of called out that that's a little weird because the game's broken and like got sued and couldn't do any fixes because they didn't have the licensing right or whatever the case was. Like oh. the game just doesn't work. So I don't know. Didn't they just add the um, Strangers? Uh, oh, Stranger that's Things that's content? Dead by Daylight. Oh, this is the Friday the. 13th oh yeah, why game. would they do that? That's right. They're right. kind of stuck with Friday. What yeah. a poor thought out. <laughs> plan. Yep. Yep. And the last one is Ninja Gaiden Three: Razor's Edge, which is an Xbox 360 game. But once again, you can play because backwards compatibility. Yeah. The most ironic thing is if you regular retail value of all these games, Ninja Gaiden Three on Xbox 360 is the most expensive game at thirty dollars. I remember Ninja Gaiden being pretty good. Oh no, they are good. It's just weird because the xbox 360 game is the highest valued yeah that, that is weird it is kind of a mm. yeah mm. Mm. on the playstation side of things though holy playstation they came out swinging with dropping the last of us remastered on, for free uh, on playstation plus <laughs> I play and it. and mlb the show 2019 so not even last year's Goodness. this year's version of the game for frizzle if you have ps plizzle my nizzle miss frizzle yeah, Miss Frizzle. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, Get on the magic school bus. Yeah, yeah. So clearly PlayStation hopping on the whole Last of Us hype right now. But I mean, good job. Jeez, I mean, if you have a PlayStation, like these are great pickups right now for for your cost of your PS Plus. Insane. Man, makes you wish you had a PlayStation, huh, Lucas? Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Black Friday or something? I don't know. That's racist. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, why, don't, why don't you give us some news then? I, I need to think about what you just said for a while. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot what podcast I was on. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about some bad stuff, shall we? Nothing I have is good. Um. So there's been a little bit of a... of a, Did this break today? I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah today. Uh, I've, I've read an article. I've watched a video that talked about the article, um, and I'm going to stumble through this for your for your sake. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with it. So, the developers of like every Sherlock Holmes game ever, and like one other game, I can't remember what it was, <laughs> <laughs> like something nobody's ever heard of. Um, the Sinking accused, City. Oh, Sinking City. Yeah, that one was good. Uh, or I mean, looked interesting. Is basically accusing. Um, um, Focus Interactive mm-hmm. of um, delisting their games off from Steam and basically all digital storefronts because their um, agreement has ran out and apparently Focus Interactive was like, 
you know what? We're when agreements run out, we're just gonna keep all the IDs that make it possible for you to make money off from this, these stores. So this is probably I think this is the first case of this with Focus Interactive. It's gotta be, right? That I've seen, yeah. Um so it's Frogware Games, I believe, that is the um the developer. And uh Basically, they can't make any money off of any of the games that they've made. All of them been produced through um, through Focus Interactive. And they put out a plea that said, hey, this is happening. We want you guys to know that these games are being removed and it's not our fault. And Focus Interactive wasn't going to say a thing about it. And... Normally I wouldn't care, but I kind of have come to like the Focus Interactive games that they put out. They have a certain right. set of developers that they work with, and they kind of make those double A games. They mm-hmm. made that vamp, or they produced a vampire game or vampire yep. or whatever, vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sinking City, just all these interesting little games that seem pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like not triple A. Not what you expect, not Call of Duty, but uh, kind of these own little things. So I'm kind of sad, man. Like everyone talks about EA being the worst, but this is pretty bad on on their part, I feel like. What do you think, Kevin? It's kind of crazy. It's like it makes me wonder, like, what kind of agreement was initially shown? Because the statement that Frogware put out was that they were just told last week that their policy was put in place that they no longer return source code. So it's like, well, if that wasn't a deal from the start, I'm pretty sure you can sue, but... Once again, being a smaller developer versus a publisher, like how much money do you have to throw in a legal battle that you right. you might they be in the right, but they'll just forever. delay until you can't do it anymore. Yeah, like that's that's the the kind of crappy part. Um, yeah, it's it's bad. Like I mean, I've played a couple, one or two of the Sherlock Holmes games. Like I said, they're a good double A game. It's a good time waster. They're interesting. They're they're well enough done. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I can think of is if which this article doesn't state, and I haven't seen anything that really clarifies it is. If Focus Home actually owns the license for the IP, because obviously Frogware doesn't own Sherlock Holmes. Somebody had to license yeah. that property. Was it Frogware that licensed that property or was it Focus Home? Because it might be a legal issue that like we can like that they should still give back the source code, but you guys can't sell it either because you're going to get sued if you do kind of deal. Like, I don't know if it's that. I, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know how that works either. I know they are they're trying to. Basically, they were like, well, we might have to make our own IDs for yeah. setting up the store ourselves. But how does that work? I, yeah, they're it not sounds used like to it's a pain that. in the butt. Yeah. Right. They don't they're have the resources to do that, I'm sure. So, uh, you know, digital games. Yep. Like, this is kind of a big problem. You're, I, I, The video I watched, they talked about Disney games do this a lot. They'll run out. Yes. The license will expire and then you can't get them anymore. So... You know, you want to talk about something that's against or, you know, an idea that's against uh, having a digital storefront or whatever. They can just disappear whenever they feel like it. Mag so Runner I'm, Dark Pulse was the other game, by the way, the one I've never heard of. So I'm reading more into this article and there were some updates further later on that. Okay. So they have the code for the games. Okay. They don't have the code for the storefront. So they rely mm-hmm. on that publisher to use their account to sell the games. So oh. the developer publisher is saying, nope you don't have access to that code anymore to put out these games. So now they're trying to figure out how to do it themselves. So they might be okay, okay. But if this is a long process or if let's say steam and PlayStation don't approve them to be sellers or publishers, then yeah, that's, that's where true. they're going to run the chance out of running out well, of money. And who knows how long that's going to take. So if this doesn't, if they don't come to an agreement, they could yep. go two weeks without making money. And that's huge. Apparently listing the games are, are expensive, especially on older systems. And it won't generate many new purchases, but that's the other problem. And because of them having to relist it, all the al- algorithms, for, as far as like sales numbers, charts, yeah. reviews, all gone. So that's a historical that's wonder, light, too, which that's rough on them. Oof, no wonder. So this is a bigger deal than it seems uh, yeah. on the surface. Yep. Yep. I agree. Ouch. Well, we'll be following this one as it progresses. <laughs> yes. Yes. What else you got? What other bad news do you okay. have for us? <laughs> so this is the other thing. I just thought this was kind of just like what else can go wrong? So a collectible Fallout 76 helmet was recalled due to dangerous <laughs> levels of mold. Of mold? Mold. How, How is there get... mold in something manufactured? Manufactured 
made of plastic, you would assume what like injection mold, right? Right. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Approximately 20,000 units of the helmet were made, and 32 were sold through GameStop. And those were the ones that had mold? I don't know. Let's see. Every recalled helmet was sold was defined as the Fallout 1-to-1 one Power Armor armor Nuka-Cola helmet. It's mouthful. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We know what it looks like. I want to know about the mold. <laughs> Stop telling me. They post a picture of what it looks like, and then they describe it in, in glaring detail. The oh, red only the GameStop were... exclusive one was recalled. Ah, not the similar looking helmet. Right. The helmet's presented with mold on the fabric insert inside the helmet at a level that poses a risk of respiratory infections. That's pretty bad for something that you're going to put on your head and then breathe through. Yeah. Especially for people with compromised immune systems, a.k.a. gamers, and damaged lungs or an allergy to mold, which I feel like doesn't everybody have an allergy to mold? Right. Like you don't breathe mold and you're like, yeah, it's good. All right. It's fine. So canvas bags, moldy helmets. Well, but it was only it's bags. but it's only the fabric inside of the GameStop's exclusive oh Nuka Cola colored one. You know what All the other do. models are fine. That's weird. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna send out like replacement fabric. <laughs> Go to hotu.com to learn how to replace the fabric. <laughs> and the fabric is gonna be made of nylon instead. Like this is this is plastic. It's like a pla- it's like a trash bag lining on the inside. Did, were these being like before they got shipped out? Were they being stored in the sinking city? Like, did these touch water and now they have black mold in them? What is well, going on? Well, let's be honest. It probably shipped from overseas. It was probably made in Taiwan or something like that. Probably sat on a boat. Yes. And maybe that one shipment, because it was all going to GameStop. It's their exclusive. It went to GameStop's distribution center. I guess it's possible. It's just that one boat trip was a bad one. It's a little, little leaky. Ugh, gross. Bethesda I, just can't win all of a sudden, huh? Like they I went know, from being right? like really cool to being like everybody complains about everything with them now. Oh. Between this, uh, this the bags of Fallout 76, just Fallout 76 in general, then Wolfenstein, all the updates. Like Wolfenstein now, all the updates they look sound awesome. I already beat the game though, so I'm, I'm good. But they cannot win this year they can't at all. Catch a break. I just feel bad for anybody who put one of these. Like I don't even care if I got one of the GameStop ones. I'm I'm instantly thinking I have mold in my lungs immediately. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I mean, the right solution people. is just don't wear it. <laughs> like, how do you, know you walk around with it on did. your head? Like, like I would put it on once. Like, all right, this is cool. But then it's sitting on a shelf. So, like, really, how often is somebody actually like? No, no. There's a streamer who gamed with it on <laughs> for an entire stream. You know that. Played Fallout 76 for 76 hours in a helmet. <laughs> in a helmet, filled oh, with mold. <laughs> and they're dead. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, the only other article I had that was worth kind of talking about a little bit we won't get too much into it so how about mario kart that thing sucks on on google huh? so i hear so i hear uh so i i will say in the forefront i've not re-downloaded it but i did play the beta test that they did those months ago and i played the the crap out of the game so that's why i have zero desire to go back to it at this point I'm like i played it as much as i'm gonna play it it was fine but this microtransactions that it's being riddled with but i do recall them saying initially when they were doing the beta they said oh there's so many microtransactions and i really didn't run into them like, they were available, but they weren't in your face, and they didn't stop you from playing. So I don't know what the big deal was. But now this pass that costs you 5 bucks a month to get extra gold and stuff, that's kind of messed up. So there's, like, two forms of microtransactions inside a mobile game that's free to play. Nintendo is usually so good about, like, not doing any of the... Like, the, the worst is DLC for Smash Brothers or something, you know? Stuff that yeah. they... They announce ahead of time. You know that yeah. it's coming, and you don't. They don't sell you the 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 um l- the gold pass ahead of time or anything like yes. that. Yep. Um. Typically, they don't hard sell it. I mean, uh, this is just not like them at all. And my other no. point is, why can't you just play? I mean, you have a Switch. It's portable. Why can't you it's, just play Mario Kart? Right. Right. I get I guess this is free the- for people who don't. And it's something a little bit different, I guess. But yeah, it's like, I, I wonder, I mean, you brought up a really good point. Like, this isn't normal Nintendo. I'm wondering, is this more that company they partnered with to do their mobile apps? I forget the name of them, but they're like the number one developer in, in Japan for mobile games like that they work with. So I'm wondering well, if it's more them influencing it versus Nintendo. In the 80s, they partnered with some people to make a Mario Brothers movie. And that we all saw how well that turned out. Fantastic. Yeah. So maybe they'll turn it around is what I'm saying. <laughs> ah, give maybe, it time and it ages better. <laughs> yes. Get a million people to pay you $5 every month for some extra gold or whatever, and they can make this a better game. 
It's our fault for not giving them money. And add John Leguizamo to voice Luigi. Oh my God, that would be amazing. I'd pay five dollars for that. <laughs> Nintendo, if you're listening. <laughs> so John Phil Leguizamo. Spencer and Nintendo, yeah, just just slide into our DMs. That we'll needs talk to be. To I was gonna say that needs to be a a, a tweet right now at John Leguizamo. I'm gonna do it. Will you? Right after we record, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Will you voice? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Luigi and Mario Kart. <laughs> Android if, if, or whatever it's called. Tour. If they if they have Samuel Jackson doing the voice for Alexa on the new Alexa ones, why can't I have John Leguizamo be Luigi? <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying it. That is a good that is a good question. Yeah. That needs to be thrown out to the internet. I'm I'm gonna do it right after we record this show. Right, this right is what we're here for. This is great ideas. This is what we do. We're the idea think tank of PSVG. Everybody else just reads a news article. They talk about it. They don't come with alternatives. Lucas and I come with solutions, everybody. This this is what we provide to the interwebs. This is our value. Kind right. of, I guess. You I mean, it's kind of one of those things that you you place your own value on our service. So to some people that's worth a lot. Speaking of which, Patreon guys. <laughs> We're the Netflix of ideas. That's what it is. <laughs> oh gosh. We will cancel anything if we don't think it's working out. Yep. Like the show. Spe- as I say, speaking of canceling. I think it's time we go. Lucas, where can people find you on the interweb, sir? Uh, in the dark web. Oh, wait, no. Mm. No, they can't podcast. find you in the dark web. Can't find you in the dark web. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm on Discord. I talk to people on there. PSVG. I, I just kind of randomly decide which which rooms I'm going to <laughs> basically get off the off the track, off the rails. Post Be like, gifts. hey, have you guys seen this? Post gifts. Yep. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can talk to me on there. I'm also on Twitter at heavy metal underscore riff. And, uh, I do another podcast called flex Check it out. You should. I or mean, don't, you, whatever. you know, you should. should check it out. Lucas, you should like, listen to it Lucas. because it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could, you maybe learn a couple things if you listen back to it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, hey. you guys know the drill PSVG.blog for all the links, to all the stuff we do, the Patreon, the discord, all the other podcasts, check them out. Um, Patreon, you can find there to find out all the details for all the cool stuff we're releasing. Uh, but overall, just thank you guys. Um, September was a great month, I think, for everybody on staff. We did a lot of cool things. Um, I will say we're not going to call it like October to remember because then when that doesn't rhyme, that's dumb. But we had things planned for September that didn't happen due to scheduling conflicts and uh, conventions and other things that kind of got in the way. So I'm just going to say like we're not done. There's going to be some cool stuff coming in October as well, at least on, on this show. I don't know if anybody else has anything planned, but this show is going to be bringing some cool guests uh, back, returning guests, if you will. True. Um, true so true, stay true. tuned. So just thank you, everybody, for your support and for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, help spread the word. Tell a friend or two. Uh, they might find something they enjoy. But most importantly, as always, we ask that you never stop gaming. This has been a PSVG production. Any music, sound effects, or the like is owned by their respective copyright holders. No infringement is intended. The views expressed in this production are those of the individual contributor and may not necessarily reflect PSVG. This production may not be repurposed, reused, or redistributed without the express written consent of PSVG. PSVG is powered by patrons at patreon.com slash PSVG. Become a patron to get special perks, including access to exclusive content.